Yo, yo, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Devon Terrell in raw form, and welcome to another Help Me Devon Raw tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon Raw tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how and why you should be using parallel compression. Now, parallel compression can be used for vocals, it can be used for drums, it can be used for anything, and I'm gonna show you guys how and why you should be using this technique to add more power, more fullness, more everything to your modern day sound of recordings. Uh, now granted, I've done parallel compression videos in the past, but it is time for a refresher and me, for me to also show you how I'm using it currently today. Let's get right to it. Okay, so first and foremost, I'll play you the song that we're using today. Uh, I'll press play and let you get an idea of it. Listen closely to the vocals. Told you you was gonna mess with me Told you I was gonna get you I can't even front I pat myself on the back Cause you only mess with the real ones Ain't giving it to no one Yeah, you got me gassed up And I'm playing it cool for you yeah. I'm a man. Okay, so you can hear the vocal it's very present, uh, it still has this airy sound, but you can hear the vocal. Every nuance, you hear that vocal, it's cutting through that mix very, very strongly. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this for you one more time, and this time, I'm gonna bypass the parallel compression. So I'm gonna have it on and off, I'm gonna keep turning the parallel compression on and off. Listen very closely to how this sounds. Okay, so with first. And watch this M over here, see this M on the parallel compressor? I'm gonna turn it on and off, listen close. Told you you was gonna mess with me Told you I was gonna get you I can't even front I pat myself on the back Cause you only mess with the real ones Ain't giving it to no one Yeah, you got me gassed up And I'm playing it cool for you yeah. I'ma make you fall in love with me Pulling every trick so you can hear a huge difference when you turn on the parallel compressor. You notice that everything kind of just pops right through the vocal cuts right through that mix. You hear um, just, it just has a more a more powerful vocal, a fullness to it that I just love and adore. And I use this on all my vocals. Uh, the template that I'm also using so that you can probably follow along is the uh, Rowdy Rich Type Vocal Template that we have on our website right now. Download is in the description if you wanna follow along with me. I use that same template for this song as usual. So, what is parallel compression? Now, there's a number of different ways that you can do it. Preferably, this is how I like to do it. So, all parallel compression is, uh, for you, those of you who don't know is, it's a copy of your other audio signal. For now, let's say vocal. It's a copy of your vocal. So here's one vocal with my mix and all the bells and whistles, and then I have another vocal. I make a complete copy of that, complete duplicate. I take that duplicate vocal, this parallel compression vocal, and I compress it to the max. I'm talking about I squash this vocal to the point where there is basically no dynamics. It's a squished, squashed brick. I then take that signal and I blend it in with the original that is not so squashed, that has all of its dynamics, and I blend the two together, okay? That's the concept of parallel compression for the most part. So it's basically taking a copy of your other signal and squashing it and blending it in with the original. Now this is very powerful off the strength that now you, instead of uh, really damaging that original vocal, you can do it and do a lot of damage and hurt uh, the other copy and blend it to taste. Uh, and that's where you just get, you keep your dynamics, but you get that vocal or sound that kind of cuts through your mix and sounds extremely, extremely aggressive and powerful. So. What are my settings for the actual parallel compressor? Before I actually tell you the settings, I'm gonna show you how I exactly route this, okay? So how do I set this parallel compressor up, right? So the way I like to do it is, I like to do it through sends. Now what I do is, I go right on over here to the vocal, I set up a send. So this is like an aux send or an aux track for you in any DAW that's using. I go down here and I send out a signal and I send it out uh, with, under this thing that says parallel compressor, which is right here. So parallel comp, that's what I'm sending it out to. So I send it out to the parallel comp and it hits the parallel comp. So the parallel comp is this fader right here. So that copy of the signal is being sent out full blast out to uh, the parallel comp track. So on the advanced side, I like to do this pre-fader. And the reason why I like to do this pre-fader is because uh, if you do it post-fader, then anytime you move this, uh, the original vocal up and down or anything in volume, it will affect the parallel compression and you don't wanna really affect that 
for this type of thing. So always make sure it's pre-fader. Don't worry, don't get too tied up on that. That's more of an advanced like setting that you have, but just know, create a send, send it out to a track. Simple as that. Okay, so now let's move on over to the send or the track that we created in order to create the parallel compression. So the first thing I like to do is, of course, I put the NLS bus on everything, NLS channel on everything. It just adds a little bit of analog saturation. That's pretty standard, what I always do. Here's what you do. I want you to grab a compressor. If you can get the CLA 76 from Waze, amazing, because it has this amazing function where it allows you to press all, so your ratio. The ratio on when you're doing parallel compression, you want it to be a very, very hard ratio. So something like a 50 to one. Ironically, when it comes to this particular compressor, uh, when you push in four, eight, 12, 20, it's a setting where you can basically, basically push in all of them and it makes it more of like a 50 to one ratio, a very hard ratio, which is similar to what? A limiter ratio. So if you don't have this plugin right here, you could set your ratio of any of your um, compressors to about 50 to one, and this is what you're gonna do. So for me, I press all, cause that's like a 50 to one ratio. I like to set my attack to the fastest I possibly can so that all the transients are caught inside of that. And I like to set my release to medium so it really holds that compression. So basically I'm hitting and, cu and cutting those peaks and I'm really holding the compression. So I'm really getting a vocal that is squashed. That's something that is really holding the dynamics in place. Next thing I like to do is I like to move on over to a limiter. So you can use for instance, an L1, I use a very simple limiter when it comes to parallel compression because I'm not looking for this crazy thing that sonically uh, you know, has a certain sound. I'm looking for something to really stop those peaks and make sure nothing cuts through. So next thing I do is I use this L1 limiter. I bring the threshold down to about a four, negative 14.3. Uh, I'm gonna play this for you right quick so you can see how hard it's hitting. Look at this closely. Told you was gonna mess with me. Told you I was gonna get you. I can't even front, I pat myself on the back. So I'm really hitting it on the peaks really hard. Where On the peaks, it's hitting at about a negative six dB of gain reduction on the limiter. Also, what I did fail to mention to you guys was how hard do you use the compression or how much gain reduction should you be looking for uh, from these this compressor when you're doing this? Uh, typically, I like to go to this like the negative 10 range. So look at this closely. I'll show you what it's doing. Look. Told you was gonna mess with me. Told you I was gonna get you. I can't even front up. So you can see my peaks on the compressor, uh, compre compressor are hitting around negative 10 dB. So that's where I'm getting a lot of that compression is from about negative 10 dB of compression at a 50 to one ratio. Then I move on down to the limiter and I'm getting about negative 6 dB of gain reduction as well. So I'm giving it negative 60 dB of gain reduction on top of that negative 10 that we already did. A lot of compression. I'm squashing this vocal, okay? Uh, you'll notice my output ceiling is at negative 8.1, which is a preference. I just like to turn it down just a little bit because realize this thing is squashed. So that's what I like to do. Now, these next two things are extremely optional. And the reason why I say they're optional is because this is you kind of tailoring um, and fine tuning the sound of the parallel compression sound. So for me, Knowing that I'm blending, I like to roll off a little bit of the low end on it. Uh, and the only reason is because I don't want too much of that stuff, especially that I'm using a copy of it and blended that in. So I like to roll off a little bit of my low end. Um, and then the last thing I like to do is don't get caught up on this particular EQ. All I'm doing is I take out a little bit in that three kilohertz range because that's the pain frequency. And since we're compressing it so hard, I know that that'll probably jar your ear or come out a little more. So I just take a little bit of that frequency out, that 3.5 kilohertz range out. That's all that is. Don't get too tied up on that. That is so optional, but something I do recommend if you do come down to that issue uh, in your recording. So once I do that, basically I play it back and this is what we have. Told you you was gonna mess with me. Told you I was gonna get you. I can't even front. I pat myself on the back. Now, granted, what you can do is, uh, mine, I have my fader set at negative 25.4. So this is what you would do. I would bring it all the way down. And basically, I bring it in, up, up. I bring this fader up until I feel like, oh, that's the sweet spot. So let's bring this fader up slowly. Listen close. Told you you was gonna mess with me. Told you I was gonna get you. I can't even front. I pat myself on the back. Cause you only mess with the real ones. Ain't giving it to no one. Yeah, you got me gassed up and I'm playing it cool for you. Yeah. I'ma make you fall in love with me. Pulling every trick from my bag out. 
So you hear that our original vocal is unscathed, it's not bothered, but this parallel compressor is just adding so much power uh, to the vocal and presence and it's cutting right through the mix. Now you can do the same exact thing for your drums, for your instruments, for uh, your vocals. You can use this parallel compression technique for so many things. Remember, you take a send from the original uh, audio fader or file, you send that to another fader. You call that fader parallel compressor and you do all of those things that I kind of walk you through. Squash it to mint. Make sure when you're sending it out to this fader that it's sent at zero. So it's sent right at the nominal level. So it's not a little lower nothing, you're sending it out right at zero. I'll show you exactly what I mean. It's this right here, you send it out right at zero. So. Make sure you guys use this technique uh, to taste. Uh, you know, it, it, some people can overuse it, but nonetheless, if you use this thing right, you can really get that modern day sound uh, that you're looking for. Even on the softest or most smooth vocals, when you're just looking for a way to make it cut through the mix without adding EQ, without adding anything to the original vocal, you can use parallel compression to bring up just a little bit more power and oomph from your mix. A lot of people even do this for mastering and actually parallel compress the entire mix, which I do do sometimes. So that is parallel compression. I really hope you do use this and I really do hope it helps. I think it's a sick technique and I think it's something that so many people are missing from their mix when it just doesn't have that life or just that, that aggressiveness that you're looking for. So make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Make sure you uh, email us at helpmedevon at gmail. Dot com. Once again, if you wanted to follow along with me and watch this again, you can download the template for this, the Rowdy Rich Type Vocal template in our description below at helpmedevon.info. Make sure you follow us at helpmedevon on the Instagram. And um, this is the road to 100K. And uh, I want to say again, appreciate you guys. And until next time.